Thank you. Um, I've been asked to actually stand back from everything and give a slightly different perspective on it, or a slightly different talk, called The View from the District. Because we must remember that it's not just about Cambridge City, it's about the district. Cambridge City, as you know, has a population of roughly 150,000 people. Cambridge District, uh, South Cambridgeshire District, which is the donut that goes around outside, we've got a population of about 180,000. Just going to do a little survey. If you live in the city, can you put your hand up? So we're fairly dominated by that. Two more questions. If you're one of my constituents, Coton, Barton, Grange, and Maddingley, so you live on the edge of the city and some of what I think is the most glorious green belt, and put your hand up if you live in the district elsewhere. So not many people here from the district, and that's uh, outside the immediate villages. And that's why I've been asked to give a short talk on the view of all of this from the district, and also from the perspective of the district council. And I want to talk about three things. Firstly, the plan that we do have, and the vision that we do have. Secondly, the deal, the implicit deal and bargain that's been made between the district and the city that underlines all of this. And thirdly, nine likes and dislikes that we've got. And I'll rattle through the nine quite quickly, don't worry. A lot of people say, this is all a bit chaotic, you haven't got a plan, you haven't got a vision. And I've heard the phrase, cart before the horse today, and I've heard the phrase, well, we're just sort of looking at one route, what about the rest? And actually, that's completely and utterly wrong. The two districts and, uh, sorry, the district, the city and the county council have very, very, very clear vision, and we've got a very, very, very clear strategy and policy, and it's being progressed at the moment. And what that is, is two things. It's the local plan, which we are desperately trying to get through a lady called Laura Graham, who's the government inspector. The local plan is very joined up. It's practically word to word, identical between the city and the district, because we've got a duty of consultation. And in essence, it says that the large scale new build housing for this area that is desperately needed for people to live will, to a very large extent, go in satellite uh, new communities. Um, they are Camborne, they are Board Airfield, they are Waterbeach, they are Northstow. And that is where the large new developments will go. They will not largely go in the Cambridge Green Belt. And that is our vision. If you would like, they can all go in the Cambridge Green Belt. That is called sustainable development. You can all cycle from the new houses in West Cambridge Fields, in Coton Village, in Maddingley, in Grantchester, north and south of Barton Road. You could cycle straight in. We wouldn't be having this debate. But this debate is happening because we've decided as a community, I think, to protect the inner green green belt and put everything further outside. The second thing we've got is a transport strategy. Now, not many people really know we've got a strategy. It's 250 pages long. It came out about a year and a half ago on the District uh, the County Council website. I know people have difficulty in finding these things, but we've got one. It's very long, but it's really quite simple. It needs three things in three ways. It needs radial roads. In other words, you can get from the outside to the inside. It needs orbital, which means you can go round and round, and it needs lots of itsy-bitsy things in the middle of Cambridge to sort out everyday little junctions and things like that. And it needs good car connections, it needs good bus connections, it needs good cycle connections, it needs good walking connections. So we have got a joined up plan. I know that what has happened is people think this Camborne to Cambridge is a sort of isolated route. And it is in a way, but it is not on its own. There are seven consultations, either happening or about to happen. It is being done in a joined up way. They are coming fast like bullets. For radial routes, as well as Camborne to Cambridge, we've got a consultation coming on down the Histon Road, and another consultation coming on down the Milton Road. Those are both going to come. On orbital routes, we've got the, we- the Western Orbital. We're going to be talking about that tomorrow in the City Deal Assembly. That is coming. On bicycling, we've got the Chisholm Trail. That is out to consultation at the moment. And for the big picture, there is the call to evidence that is happening very soon. Um, and there is also, a, a, at some stage, there will be a congestion charging. So there is a lot of joined-up thinking happening at the moment. But people 
notice it when it comes to you in your local particular area. But actually, there's a lot of it happening at the moment. The second thing I want to say very quickly is the implicit bargain, the implicit deal that all of this represents between us in the rural areas, five, ten miles away, in the district, and you guys in the city. And it's this. We will take your housing in new settlements of 10,000 people and above, and that means that there won't be any housing on your doorstep in the green belt. And that's what most people want. But it's a two-way bargain. And the other side of the bargain is we want to be able to get to Cambridge fast, quickly and reliable. That's the deal. And therefore, in order to protect the Cambridge Green Belt, you've got to have good, fast, reliable public transport access through the Green Belt. And I heard the point about the gentleman about not wanting to divide communities. I agree with that. But we've got to be able to get ourselves through the Green Belt. Now, the um, existing guided busway is a fantastic example of a successful example. Now, I know, that, you know why has the existing guided busway been built when Northstow hasn't. Answer, it was easy. It went down an existing old railway line. Very easy, not contentious. Now we're moving on to the more contentious ones. But the fact is, we need these fast, reliable, reliable means good journey time. If it's going to take eight minutes, it will take eight minutes. Won't be held up by a traffic jam or anything like that. That is the implicit deal that we are asking for from the district. Now I'm just going to change gear, really, and very quickly talk about nine... Um, likes and dislikes, scepticisms and preferences that we see partly from the district but also from the district council. These are district councils. They're not necessarily official positions but they are, I think, I think what, what most councillors and a lot of us um, regard as our views. Number one, tunnels are a lovely idea, aren't they? But they, you know, let's get real. I'm afraid we have a major scepticism that tunnelling is going to solve the problem. They are vastly expensive. They don't really exist anywhere else in the world. For communities like ours of 150, 200,000 people, um, if it, I, I could see there might be one tunnel somewhere might help, but a network of tunnels, you know, a tunnel from Campbell, a tunnel from Bourne, a tunnel from Waterbeach, a tunnel from here, a tunnel from there, popping up at Market Square, popping up at North West Cambridge, popping up at the Science Park, popping up at Drummer Street, popping up at the railway station. We just have a scepticism that in the real world, in the next five or ten years, it ain't going to happen. Trains. We love trains. You know, the new Cambridge bus station, Cambridge North, is fantastic. We love trains. We would love a railway station from Addenbrookes. We think opening old train lines would be brilliant. The guided bus is effectively opening an old train line. We think there's a train line down to Haverhill, to Linton. That would be a very good way of getting people who want to come up to Addenbrookes to use it. But we do have a scepticism of brand new train lines because British Rail does not have a history of building brand new train lines straight through the countryside <coughs> recently at all, nor a budget, and we don't, again, think they're going to happen. So if we're very interested in them. It would be lovely to happen, but we have a scepticism. We would like, thirdly, the Girton Interchange to be rebuilt. We absolutely agree with that. But we have to be realistic about where the money's coming from. The A14 project is about one thing and one thing only, which is getting a lorry from Felixstowe to Birmingham fast. And the government has said just no way will we spend money on the Girton Interchange to do anything else. So we've got to campaign for it from a different pot of money in a few years' time for the A14 upgrade. But right here and now, A14 money is not going to be available. Fourthly, congestion charging. I agree with an enormous amount. We agree with an enormous amount of what Robin has said. We do not want to pay £5 or £10 to come in for the district, into the city, if you are paying nothing. I'm really sorry. <laughs> if, if you're going to use it as a tax to keep us out while you have a lovely time zooming around in your cars, we are not happy. Everybody thinks the London congestion charge is a model. So I looked up on Wikipedia yesterday. The area of London with the congestion charge is one point. 3% of the area of Greater London. It is the same as having a congestion charge zone somewhere between King's Parade and Christ's Pieces. Well, we've got that already, haven't we? It's called Rising Bonnards. If it's going to be throughout the city, we completely agree with Robin, you've all got to pay it as well. If you want to go more than one mile from your front door, you pass a camera and you pay. 
That is fair and equitable. And we also agree it doesn't come in for 10 years as a minimum. First, put all the bus or other public transport routes. It's a carrot and a stick. Really what you want is such good public transport. I don't want 7%, sir. I don't want 14%. I want 20, 30% people on public transport because public transport will be so good they won't need to be sticked into there by paying money. They will actually want to go on it because it's so good. I remember 20, 30 years ago, you wanted to go to London, you drove. Now you want to go to London, you take the train, don't you? It's a good alternative, and I don't take the train to London because of the congestion charge. I take the train to London because it's the quickest, best, and most efficient way of going. And that would be the best way. Very quickly now, we like, we, we like having employment sites in our big areas. That's why the District Council moved to Camborne, 200 jobs in Camborne. That's the way to do it, then people don't. Um, we like park and ride, we want it to be well connected near houses on this particular route. We want it down on the A428 near Hardwick, near the two roundabouts at Scotland Farm. That would be connected east-west along the A428 near the population in Hardwick. We like cycling. We absolutely agree. We all wear Lycra and we are prepared to cycle much further distances than you think because we don't regard a 10-mile cycle ride as a laborious effort of getting to work. We regard it, lots of us regard it, as the exercise we want to do during the day. And a five or ten mile cycle ride from a park and ride quite a long way outside central Cambridge is actually what a surprising number of people are very, very happy to do. And we completely enough agree, Robin, you want that off-road, safe, nice, fast. Um, and finally, buses. It says here, are bus lanes the only answer? Well, they're not the only answer, but they are absolutely, completely and utterly part of the solution, and we absolutely, definitely need them. And I'm just going to give you one final remark. There is a wonderful lady in Grantchester called Lizzie Oban Randler, who a lot of people will know, and she'll be surprised if I'm referencing her today. She's a wonderful environmentalist, uh, and she taught me an amazing lesson. I, her field is next door to our house. And about five, ten years ago, I was ruthlessly chopping ivy off one of our trees. And she shouted across, she said, why are you chopping that ivy down? And I said, well, Lizzie, when I see, look at ivy that's coming up a tree, I actually see an unkempt tree, an unlooked after tree, and somebody with a farm or a garden or something like that that's not properly looking after their trees. And she said, Francis, you got completely and utterly wrong. She said, when I look at ivy on a tree, I see a, a habitat for bugs and beetles, and I see uh, food for birds during the winter. In other words, she just looks at something in a completely lovely different way. And I'm going to use that analogy. When I see an off-road bus route going through the Green Belt, getting somebody from Camborne or Bourne or Waterbeach into Cambridge, I do not see a horrid, nasty strip of transport, traffic, awful destruction of the countryside. I see something that facilitates, the, that is necessary to facilitate the protection mm. of the Cambridge Green Belt. That is how we're going to protect the Green Belt, by allowing access through it. And that's what I see whenever I see a bus. Thank you. Okay, thank you.